Today, I'm gonna show you the secret to getting a remote job. Now, just for you, I've made this as simple as I possibly could by breaking down everything into three factors that determine whether or not you will get a second look from a hiring manager or if they will just throw your resume in the garbage. Each one is super important as they all build up on one another. And the last one is the ultimate make it or break it factor that most people just ignore. So if you want to make a substantial amount of money from remote work sooner rather than later, then this video is for you. Let's get into it. All right, so the first factor is to search for gold. Now, this is the easiest part because now you just have to go out and actually find the opportunities. Now, there's a slew of places you can go to to find remote work opportunities, but some of the best places that I like to go to would be places like LinkedIn, Indeed, as well as Upwork.com. I use these places quite regularly when I need to find some quick remote work, and it usually works out pretty well. I have another video on the channel explaining all of my favorite places that I go to to get remote work. If it's not up yet, I'll be sure to put a link down in the description when it's there. So just be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Now, when you are looking for these opportunities, you just have to write them down somewhere. I like to make a nice little list using Apple Notes, but you can really use anything that you'd like. I recommend making a list of at least 20 to 30 places initially, just so that you can get started and then start applying to about five to 10 places per day. And I know that that might seem like a lot, but really in the grand scheme of things, it's not. Remember, you only need one company to say yes for you to start getting paid for doing some remote work. Just don't fall into the trap of applying to one place and then just expecting them to call you back and then if they don't, then you're like down in the dumps because they didn't call you back. But if you apply for a ton of places, five to 10 every single day, you won't have to worry about that because one of them will eventually say yes. So now that you're done searching for gold, it's now time for the next most important part on this entire list. This is tip number two, tell them that you're awesome. All right, so this one is super important, so be sure that you're paying attention. But when you tell them that you're awesome, that's just another way of saying you need to create a great resume. Now, I do have some training on how to put together the perfect resume. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description for it, but just for the sake of time, I'm gonna go through the three most important factors of putting together a awesome resume. And be sure to take some notes because these are the three things you have to absolutely get right if you want to be able to stand out from the crowd. All right, number one is you need to be honest and professional. And the reason why you need to put those two things together is that honesty, you can't forget honesty. When you lie on your resume, you have to remember that lie for the whole time that you're probably working with that vendor. And usually it's going to come out because it's not true anyways. But you also must be super professional. Now, this one is probably going to rub people the wrong way because you have to be yourself, right? You want to express yourself the way that you want to express yourself, but you have to play the game when it comes to getting a job. I remember growing up, there were times where people at school would make fun of the way that I spoke because I just spoke in a proper manner most of the time. And that was just the way that my mom taught me how to speak to people. That was my get a job speak when you think about it. But then I also talked a lot differently if I was talking with friends and family. So just play the role of being professional, speak clearly, don't use a lot of slang, just do things that are going to make sense. Now, some people may call that code switching, but to be honest, as long as people can understand you and not have to guess, you're going to be fine. The next thing that you want to keep in mind when it comes to putting together your resume is that it is okay to embellish a bit. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, Chris, didn't you just say you're not supposed to lie? Well, you're not lying. You're just embellishing a bit. And the point of this is to make sure that your experience pops off the page of your resume. So for example, if you are applying for a job and in the job description, it says specifically that you need to have a four year degree. I would just go ahead and apply to that job anyway. And in your resume, make mention if you have no college or some college or any type of experience that you have going into a secondary school, you want to be sure to include that in the resume, hopefully using the term college or university. By doing this, it gives you a better chance at getting through a lot of the filters that are used when these hiring managers are looking for people to work for them. All right, so let me explain what I mean by clearing the filters, because the thing is, imagine yourself being a hiring manager and you put a job posting out there on the internet, meaning that pretty much everyone around the world has the opportunity to apply for it. So instead of that hiring manager sitting there and going through hundreds of resumes, what they're going to do is filter out stuff based on certain keywords that they're looking for. And you wanna make sure that these types of keywords are included in your resume, like college or university, because it's going to give you a better chance at clearing those filters. This is different for every hiring manager and every job that's out there. So it's not gonna work 100% of the time, but it will give you a better opportunity if you just allow 
allow it. So once these hiring managers have gone through the whole process and gotten rid of probably 80% of the resumes, they now only have about 10, 20 or 30 resumes to review and then start calling people back for first interviews. Okay, so here is a ninja trick that I like doing when it comes to applying for these types of remote work jobs is it requires a lot of work, don't get me wrong, but it's really insanely helpful if you're able to do it. Always remember looking for a job in itself is like having a full-time job in itself. So it's going to take you some time to make sure that you put your best foot forward and make sure these resumes are awesome. So what I recommend you do is to rewrite your resume for every job that you apply for. And you can do this in a particular set of ways that I wanna to explain to you right now. So when you look at a job description, a job description are going to have the job responsibilities in it. These are usually those first few bullet points within the job description. Usually there might be 10 to 12 of them of the things that they are gonna want you to do if you were to get that job. But a little known fact that people don't really know about when it comes to job descriptions, and this is even true on resumes as well, people tend to list the most important things first, and then as you go down that list, those things are less and less relevant. So those first two to three bullet points, I want you to look at them and study them, and then take that information and include it in your resume, preferably as the first two to three points in your experience that you list from previous jobs. Just be sure to use the similar wording from the job description into your resume. That way you can uh, be sure to pass a lot of these filters. I just remind you, do not copy word for word. You don't wanna do that. Just make sure that you're using some of the major words that are mentioned in the job description and putting them in your resume. Now, obviously when you are doing this, you're going to be writing a ton of resumes depending on the type of job that you are applying for, but just be absolutely sure that you read over every word of the resume before you submit it to make sure if you're doing a like a copy paste job and just changing up certain words that you're not leaving something that's specific to a particular job in the resume because that's going to automatically get you kicked out. Now, before we get into the super secret hack that's going to pretty much get you any remote job that you ever want to apply for, there's one more thing that you need to make sure that you include in your resumes. Let's talk about it now. Now, I talk about this a lot in my newsletter called Your Extra Paycheck, but you need to be punchy in your resume. Always remember this principle, fewer words are almost always better. And I say almost because sometimes you can't get around using a certain number of words just to be descriptive. But for the most part, if you can use fewer words, you're gonna always win. Your resume is supposed to be highlights of your career, not an entire book. So don't write a book for your resume. Keep your resume no more than two pages if you can help it. If you can do one page, that's even better. 99.9% .9 of jobs are not gonna require more more than a two page resume. But there are some jobs out there that might require like really high pay or you will need a ton of experience in order to do that job that might require resumes that are more than, you know, two pages, maybe three to four pages. But even then that's still stretching it. You wanna be sure to highlight only the most relevant things within your experience that's going to cater well to having that remote position. And this also is the same for your education. I'm sorry to break it to you, but no no one cares where you went to elementary school, okay? No one cares that you were a camp counselor at a summer camp for a while. Now, if you are applying for like a leadership position, you may wanna mention that, but notice it's because it's relevant. Only keep relevant information within your resume so that you're not wasting these hiring managers time. So every word, every education, every experience that you are putting on your resume, be absolutely sure that it makes sense for what you are applying for. Now, I don't want to make you feel bad or anything, but it's true. A lot of these hiring managers could care less what we did in our previous lives. They are just looking for what we can do for them. So check your ego a little bit, bring yourself down a notch and just include the things that really make sense in that resume. But now it's time for the number one, the absolute thing that you need to be including in each one of the jobs that you are applying for if you want the best shot at getting that job. And that is tailoring the cover letter to be perfect. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, a cover letter is like the cheat code to getting a job. And this is good, not just for remote work, but even if you're applying somewhere locally where you're going to be doing face-to-face -face type stuff, it's always great to include a written, well-thought-out cover letter. Well, just like your resume that I recommended earlier, you should probably rewrite for every job that you are applying for. You're gonna wanna do the exact same thing for your cover letter. Your resume is probably not gonna change that much every time that you rewrite it, but your cover letter should probably be an 
entire different note every single time. Remember that your cover letter needs to be specific to the job that you are applying for. This is usually where you can be a little bit more extra and embellish stuff within the cover letter so that you can be sure to pop off on the page so that the uh, hiring manager will then look closer at your resume. And there are a few ways to do this. So number one, be sure to address the job directly. What I mean by that is that the first sentence in your cover letter needs to be, thanks for applying for this position at this company. Be very, very specific so that they know what they're getting into when they're reading that cover letter. After that, actually highlight your enthusiasm or your excitement for wanting to work for that company. This is where you can get a little bit extra. Maybe you did some research and maybe you found that they have some good reviews here, or maybe they talked about them on social media somewhere. And just mention that, hey, I saw you when I was doing research and I was really impressed by how the company did this. I was really impressed with how the company took care of their customers in this particular situation. It doesn't matter, just come up with something showing them that you are very interested in the position, but not just the position itself, but into the company itself. That's gonna help show them that you're buying into the company culture and you haven't even been hired yet. Now here is another ninja trick that you can use is be sure to include stories and examples of things throughout your professional career. But you don't just wanna include like random things that you just wanna talk about. You want to include stories that are specific to things in the job description. Remember, like we talked about earlier, look at those first four to five bullet points within the job description and think about specific situations in your career where you had to deal with something like that and how you dealt with it. The story doesn't have to be like anything ridiculous, like writing a book or anything. We're talking just a few lines. You can usually tell a pretty quick story by just talking about where you were, what you wanted, what was in the way of what you wanted, and then how you were able to overcome it. That's a good story and that's good enough to include in a cover letter. In terms of length, don't let the cover letter get any longer than one page. These people aren't looking for books to read about your life. They're just trying to get through as many resumes as possible and trying to cut it down so that they can actually bring people in to have the first interview. I won't lie, creating these cover letters will take time, but this is what's going to separate you from everybody else. All of those other people who are applying for the job are just copying and pasting their cover letters. You're gonna write one that's specific and unique for that particular job position. That way, the hiring manager is going to see you jumping out in front of everybody else because you took the extra time. Always remember this, if it's hard to do, pe most people won't do it, all right? If you're gonna go the extra length, the extra mile, to be sure that you are doing something just a little bit extra than everybody else, you will stand out. For bonus points in that cover letter, include like screenshots of work that you've done and how you were able to help the overall overall company, either save money, save time, or become more efficient. So for example, one thing that I always include in cover letters was a situation where I helped a company go from zero to $400,000 in total revenue in less than four months. I mean, who's going to ignore that? So even if you don't have something that's that crazy, all you really need to do is find something unique, something genuine that you've done in your professional career that helped a company forward. After you do that, submit the job posting, put together the cover letter, put together the resume, submit it, and then be done with it. I want you to emotionally take that out of your head. And from then you move on to the next job listing. I'm sorry if that sounds preachy to you a little bit, but the fact is, if you allow this to get in your head and then the next day you're checking and then the next day you're checking and then the next day, you're gonna end up just losing your mind. And I don't want you to do that. Just start applying for more and more positions. It ends up becoming a numbers game. And remember, you just need one company to say yes. Now, there are some other things that you can do like following up and thank you letters to make sure that you are uh, uh, putting your best foot forward when it comes to applying to these positions. But I'm gonna leave some of that for the people within my community. And as great as it is to have a perfect resume and cover letter, it means absolutely nothing if you don't have any jobs to apply for or know where to look. So watch the video right here where I will show you the best places to look for remote work. I believe in you and it's about time that you believed in yourself. Take care.